Good evening. Welcome to this evening's campfire program. My name is Kristen and I'm a California State Park interpreter here at the Oceano Dunes District. And this evening, our campfire program is being held here at the Oceano Campground. Now tonight, we're going to take a journey into bugs. And you might be thinking, ooh, bugs are creepy and crawly and they really bug me. But tonight, we're going to learn that bugs serve an important purpose to our world. Now before we get to our program, I'm going to send it over to my friend, Ben. Hey everyone, my name is Ben. Welcome to the campfire trivia part of the night. We get to test your wildlife and trivia knowledge. So the way this will work is I'll read these questions to you and they'll flash big on the screen as well. I'll give you a few moments to think about your answers and I'll flip over the page to show you the correct answer. So first question, which state in the US has the most state parks? Um, is it Texas, Alaska, Florida, or California? What do you guys think? Texas. Oh, not Texas. Good guess, that's a big state, but they don't have the most state parks. Yes, it is California. We have the most state parks of any state in the country. Pretty cool. All right, second question is, how long does it take for plastic to fully decompose or biodegrade? Um, is it six months, one year, around a thousand years, or it never fully does? What do you guys think out of those four options? Is it hmm. 1,000 years? Oh, even longer than 1,000 years. Um, it technically, it's kind of a tricky question because it never actually fully does decompose. Um, plastic just breaks up into smaller and smaller pieces, um, but never totally biodegrades. So it's going to be in the oceans and in the habitats where it pollutes for pretty much forever. Um, so we need to cut back on that. Third and final question. How long have dragonflies lived on Earth? Is it 1 billion years? Is it 5,000 years? 300 million years? Or just 10 years? What do you guys Brilliant. think? A billion? Nope, a little bit less than a billion. Good guess. What do you guys think? Okay. 300 million years? Nice, yeah, 300 million. Good guess. It is 300 million years. That's how long dragonflies have been around on Earth. Um, they're pretty ancient animals, which is really cool. You can learn a whole lot of more cool bug facts later in the program. Great job on the trivia. I'll head it back over there. Thanks, Ben, for the great trivia. Now let's explore the interesting and exciting world of bugs. Did you know that there are literally billions of bugs found all around the world? And some bugs are huge, like this gigantic atlas moth with a wingspan measuring almost nine inches in length. And some bugs are tiny, like this ladybug. And some bugs found around the world are so tiny they can't be seen by the naked eye. Some bugs use camouflage to blend in with their environment, like this bug called the common true Katie did. And some bugs like to be seen, like this wasp. And some bugs are cute, like this jumping spider. And some bugs are icky. But not all bugs are insects. Can you guess which of these three bugs is an insect? Is it a spider? Is it an ant? Is it a centipede? And the insect is... The ant is the insect. But wait, there's a difference between a bug and an insect? Well, it gets a little fuzzy. All bugs are insects, but not all insects are bugs. Humans typically classify anything that has many legs, small flies, or crawls as a bug. Hold on, is trying to figure out this bug versus insect starting to bug you too? Let's try to figure this out by separating bugs into three groups, which are arachnids, myriapods, and insects. We are going to explore these three groups a little further and look at some of the bugs and insects that belong to these groups. Let's look at the group arachnids first. Arachnids have eight legs and two body parts. We often see arachnids crawling on our walls inside our homes. If you are thinking of spiders, you are correct. Let's explore some of the arachnids found in California. Tarantulas are found in California and are often large and hairy. There are about an estimated 1,000 identified species of tarantulas found throughout the world. Another type of spider found in California are orb weavers who are known for their spiral shaped webs and are one of the most common types of spiders who build webs. These spiders are non-aggressive and often flee at first sight of a threat. Jumping spiders can also be found in California and pretty much around the world. These spiders have an impressive jump, being able to jump up to 50 times their own body length. Black widows are a common spider found in California who are known for their famous red hourglass marking. 
A black widow's bite can be dangerous to humans, but these spiders only bite in defense and it's only the female black widow bite which is poisonous. Male and juvenile black widow spider bites are not venomous. Lastly, another arachnid found in California is a scorpion. Scorpions do have a venomous sting, but pose a small threat to humans. The second group we are going to explore is myriapods, which include centipedes and millipedes. Myriapods have segmented bodies and have more than eight legs, and some centipedes have as many as 177 legs. Let's explore some of the myriapods found in California. The house centipede can be found in California and has a total of 15 pairs of legs. And if a leg is injured or it falls off, it can regrow its leg. These centipedes do have fangs, but cannot puncture through human skin. Next, we have the only millipede in the world that is bioluminescent, which means it glows in the dark. This millipede is called the Motixia millipede. Lastly, we have the yellow spotted millipede, which can be spotted in California. These millipedes have 30 pairs of legs, and if you were to hold one of these in your hand, it would curl up and release a smell similar to toasted almonds. While this smell isn't awful, this millipede is releasing cyanide into the air. Now, the amount released isn't enough to do harm to humans, but can harm birds and rodents. The third group we are going to explore are insects. Insects have six legs and three body parts, which are the head, thorax, and abdomen. Let's name a few insects found in California. An insect found in California is the praying mantis. These insects are typically green and blend in with their environment. They can turn their heads 180 degrees to help scan their environment. Another insect that can be found in California is the mosquito. Now, these insects can really be irritating with their itchy bites. There are more than 3,000 species of mosquitoes found throughout the world. And lastly, a very special insect who comes to this park every year, the monarch butterfly. These insects can be seen at the Pismo State Beach Butterfly Grove from November to mid-February. Now that we have covered the difference between bugs and insects, what do bugs and insects do for us? Well, they are pollinators, which means they help pollinate fruit, flowers, and vegetables. Pollinators such as bees provide the transfer of pollen to flowers. As these pollinators travel from flower to flower, pollen falls off the insect and onto the flower, which accounts for 80% of all pollination. Another benefit of insects is silk production, which has a history of use by humans for at least 5,000 years. The silkworm produces silk when undergoing the larval stage to the adult metamorphous stage. This silk can be used for cloth, clothes, and even rugs. Lastly, another benefit of insects are certain types of insects are nature's recyclers, which we call decomposers, such as earthworms and millipedes. Decomposers break down dead materials, such as leaves, by putting vital nutrients back into the soil and helping to balance ecosystems. Let's play a game of I Spy. During this evening's program, we learned that certain bugs are good at camouflage. So let's see if you can spot the bug in these pictures. And remember, no matter how beautiful or creepy, how big or how small, bugs are so important to our world and should be respected one and all. Thank you for joining us on this evening's campfire program as we explored bugs and insects. And I hope you learned that bugs and insects serve an important purpose to our world. Until next time, this is Kristen. Thank you for joining us along our campfire program this evening as we explored the world of bugs. I hope you enjoyed the program, and if you would like to see past and future campfire programs, please check out and subscribe to the Oceano Dunes District YouTube channel.